going to go ahead and say there's no real conclusion to this video. I'm just kind of vomiting out thoughts. Hi, I'm T1J. Follow me on Twitter. So even though a lot of people have asked me to do so, I've never really made a video specifically about anxiety or depression or mental illness or anything in that category because I never really felt comfortable talking about it because I figured it was something that I never experienced myself. And I think it's the type of thing that you can't really just read about or look up and then come to an understanding about it. And while I do have a lot of friends and acquaintances that deal with this kind of thing, it doesn't really come up in conversation that much. So I haven't really got that much insight in that way. So almost two years ago, I had an anxiety attack for the first time, and that sucked. Now, if you don't know what an anxiety attack or a panic attack feels like, it uh, kind of feels like you're dying. It feels like what you might think a heart attack feels like, but generally, it's not actually life-threatening. Now, even though that was my first panic attack, I kind of understood what was happening. Just because I've been around long enough to have heard many, many stories about it, and like I said, a lot of my friends deal with it, and every now and then, they'll describe what it's like. But it was very weird to me because I never thought of myself as someone with anxiety. I mean, everyone gets anxious. That's a normal human response to nerve-wracking situations. But for some people, anxiety can sort of flare up, I guess, and make you really, really physically uncomfortable. Sometimes to the point where it's like hard to normally function. Sometimes it makes you feel like sort of out of body, like you feel like you're not real or that maybe you're the only thing that is real, which can in turn make you feel like you're going crazy, which can make you panic even more. And then sometimes it can get to a point where your body freaks out and sends a response to your brain that tells you that you're about to die. Now I am by no means an expert on this, so lots of what I say may be completely stupid and ignorant. I don't know if it is necessarily indicative of a disorder if this happens to you. My guess is that everyone is capable of reaching that boiling point, but there are people for whom this happens frequently, if not consistently. And it can range from you just being very restless and uncomfortable to like with me, I've had to just curl up in bed in the fetal position for 30 minutes and just wait for it to pass. So at this point, I think it's possible that I experienced this kind of anxiety before the panic attack, but I don't really remember, so I'm not sure. If I did, I didn't understand what it was at the time. But now it's very clear to me when it's happening and what exactly is going on. And in my situation, there were other factors that affected it. Like I was drinking a whole lot of energy drinks and caffeine and stuff at the time, and also I was dealing with a lot of stress in my life at the time. So perhaps it was just a perfect storm of situations that led to the first panic attack. But I think that panic attack like broke something in my brain, because ever since then, I experienced moderate to severe anxiety pretty frequently. And I have like, I want to call them mini panic attacks every now and then. I mean, it could be just because I understand it more that they don't seem as bad as the first one. Like, I don't think I'm going to die anymore, but they still suck. And I want to go ahead and say that I fully understand a lot of people have it much worse than I do. I feel almost kind of bad for comparing myself to other people. Like, I've heard of people that have it really bad. Like, I watched a video recently of some guy who says he has panic attacks every week. Dodie Clark just released a video where she says that she hasn't felt normal in years. So as of now, I don't take anything for it, like any pills or medicine and that's a thing that I'm not really sure about like when do you know that pills are appropriate I assume that if you can normally function for the most part without them then you probably shouldn't take them but I don't know I went to the doctor after the first panic attack just to make sure I wasn't actually dying and once they determined that I actually was prescribed antidepressants and I found that kind of weird because it was so easy I guess that topic is kind of a whole nother video nonetheless I never filled the prescription so I don't want you to think I'm overstating anything I'm just sharing ideas because it's probably good to talk about it anyway so what one interesting thing to me is how a lot of people sort of accept their anxiety or depression as just a normal part of who they are, which I suppose if it's something that you never expect to get rid of, then that makes sense because you don't want to be ashamed of something that's just a normal part of your life. The thing with me is I don't accept it. Like I wouldn't say that I'm ashamed of it, but I really don't appreciate it and I'm fully invested in trying to figure out how to get rid of it. Maybe that's naive, but that's just kind of how I feel right now. Another interesting thing about it is that a lot of people who suffer from anxiety also suffer from depression and I don't think this applies to me. I definitely suffer from anxiety, but I don't really suffer from depression. But of course, everyone's different. I think the most interesting thing that I take away from this is being someone who basically spent my whole life not really experiencing or understanding this thing that a lot of people are talking about, and then suddenly experience it and suddenly being able to relate to these stories. And like I said, my experience is unique to me, and I know a lot of people have it much worse than I do, but I think it's good to share stories about this, especially if you have a platform, just to spread awareness about a thing that so many people deal with. My guess is that there will be many thoughts on this in the comments, so I'm looking forward to reading those. Sorry if this video was too open-ended or rambly for your taste. Here are some other videos about anxiety, depression, and mental illness that you might want to check out, including the ones I mentioned before. I want to go ahead and give a shout out to all of the new subscribers. How you doing? And if you're not one, subscribe if you like my hair.
Thank you once again for watching my video. For those that don't know, I'm a full-time YouTube creator, and the only way that I'm able to do that is through your support, and a large portion of that support comes through Patreon. Now, Patreon is a crowdfunding site for people like me with ongoing creative projects. It's kind of like an online tip jar where you can set it up to donate just a couple bucks every time I make a new video. So if you find any value in my channel or my videos, or if you just want to support me, please consider signing up for Patreon. That would be super amazing and totally appreciated. But even if you don't feel like it or if you can't, that's fine too. I just thank you for watching.